Guys, here they are, the iPhone 14, 14 Pro, and 14 Pro Max. Uh, there's a few changes uh, that are worth talking about. Let's quickly look at the unboxing, and then let's talk about the changes. If you're planning on buying the iPhone 13 Pro, it's better to pick the iPhone 14 now because it has mostly the same specifications. You get the same A15 Bionic chip with the five core GPU that you saw on the iPhone 13 Pro, and you get the same main camera on the iPhone 14 as well. So you get sensor shift image stabilization, you get 4K up to 60 FPS on standard video, you also get the cinematic mode, and now you also get the new action mode, which allows you to capture super steady videos at up to 2.8K resolution at up to 60 frames per second. The display is the same 6.1 inch display if you choose the standard iPhone 14 and you get about 1200 nits of peak brightness on this. It is a Super Retina XDR display so you do get that nice resolution and of course you get a whole host of new things including a brand new safety feature called crash detection which basically uses improved gyroscope sensors and some algorithm changes to detect if you've been in a accident or a crash and it'll automatically notify the authorities if you are unable to reach your phone. Now much like fall detection that we saw on the Apple Watch this should be a really useful safety feature to have in the iPhones and all across the iPhone 14 series uh, this comes as standard. Another feature that Apple has added into the iPhone 14 is satellite connectivity and while this is available only in the US at this moment it is an impressive feature and uh, the fact that you'll be able to send emergency messages and uh, there's a whole user interface built in to detect satellites and then communicate via them this is something that if they launch globally which I think they should soon when it becomes available in a country like India which has patchy network throughout this can be a really useful feature as well. Now let's move on to the Pro phones. The main big changes are coming to the Pro phones, the 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max. For starters, you can see that they're available in two new colors, the Space Black and uh, this new Deep Purple. And both of these look really nice. The Deep Purple is not very purple. In fact, it doesn't look purple at all. It only looks purple at certain angles when the light catches it. But most of the time, it does look like a dark gray or a black. The phones have the same 6.1 inch and 6.7 inch displays, but you get up to 2000 nits of peak brightness, which is impressive, especially if you're outdoors and in the direct sunlight, you'll still be able to look at the display. The big major change comes to the front of the display where the notch has been replaced with what Apple is calling the dynamic island. Now this space is actually really fluid and it changes as per your requirements. It also houses your Face ID module, so every time you unlock the device, the animations and everything shows up in the dynamic island. If you're using certain apps, when you close the apps, they go and close into the dynamic island. So for example, if you're playing music, you can see the album art as well as uh, the animation for uh, the music right there in uh, the dynamic island. And you can also do this with multiple apps and you can also use the dynamic island as a app switcher. I think this is a really smart implementation and the more I use it, the more I like it. Apple has also introduced a new always on display mode and this is a full color always on display unlike many other always on displays that we've seen. And what it basically does is reduce the refresh rate of the display all the way down to one hertz and it also significantly reduces the brightness of the display. And you can see that if you're playing music, the album art will remain on the always on display. If you have interactive things like a timer running, those will also show up on the always on display. And that looks really nice. And I'm sure this consumes a lot of battery and we'll be testing that out. Uh, but from the implementation of it, it looks really good. And the use of the dynamic island mixed with the always on display has made the iPhone lock screen experience and the notification experience completely new in the 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max. Now both these phones are available in four storage options, all the way from 128 gigabyte to one terabyte. So you can choose your favorite. If you choose the lowest option and you wanna shoot ProRes video, that'll be restricted to 1080p. The new iPhone 14 Pros also get the faster A16 Bionic chip. This is a four nanometer process based chip and uh, this has 16 core neural engine, a six core CPU with a five core GPU. Now performance numbers are significantly higher than the A15 Bionic, which in itself was not a slouch and is available on the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 14 Plus. 
Like every year, the Pro phones get advanced cameras as well. So the main camera on both the 14 Pro and the Pro Max is a new quad pixel 48 megapixel sensor. Will give you an effective quad pixel 12 megapixel shot in auto mode, but you can turn on Apple Pro Raw to get a 48 megapixel shot. And the image sizes are considerably higher, but you can choose 12 megapixel or 48 megapixel raw shots. You also continue to get the ultra wide camera and the telephoto camera, which is a 3X but Apple has added a 2X telephoto into the quad pixel main camera, allowing for a 12 megapixel 2X zoom. And this is almost identical to an optical zoom. So you essentially get four camera modes, an ultra wide, a normal, a 2X and a 3X, which is gonna be excellent for photography as well as videography. Speaking of video, you get 4K up to 60 FPS and no 8K this time around, despite the larger sensor. And you also get cinema mode up to 4K at 30 frames per second. Action mode uses a mixture of software as well as hardware to give you super stable shots. And you also get ProRes in the Pro phones. The front camera also has a 12 megapixel autofocus capability. And across the iPhones, you also get the Photonic engine, which Apple showed off at the launch event. And we are eager to test this out in low light environments. But more importantly, the crash detection feature as well as the satellite connectivity feature is available on all phones. Satellite connectivity restricted to the US for the time being. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed uh, the iPhone 14 and the 14 Pro, what are your thoughts on the Dynamic Island? And uh, would you upgrade to the iPhone 14 Pro just for the Dynamic Island? Because a lot of people will for uh, that feature. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you get more crispy content like this. This has been Bharat. I'll see you guys in the next one.